welcome back to the channel. I'm Susanna. And I'm Chris. And this is Whatever Wednesdays. And today, it's kind of important. So if you're even planning on going RVing this summer, you must watch this video. Okay, so RVing in the summer presents some challenges, namely heat. So we're gonna give you 15 ways that you can help keep your RV cooler so you can actually enjoy your RV experience. Susanna has a couple right off the bat. You could just take a cold shower. She tells me to do that a lot. <laughs> Or you could go stand in the wind. All joking aside, here are 15 ways to beat the heat. We're going to group these into a few different categories. And the first category is throw some shade. So request a shady site at your RV park that you're going to, or if you're going to go boondocking, try to find a tree or something that's going to provide shade to keep your RV a little bit cooler. Your awnings, if you put your awnings out, they will provide some shade, especially you'll notice it when you open your door. Um, it's significantly cooler if the awning's out, but you have to be wary of wind. Oh, shoot. Um. The next thing you can do to provide some shade is put some uh, Reflectix insulation in your windows. Reflectix basically looks like aluminum foil bubble packing material, but it's cheap, it's effective, you can actually get it uh, a roll of four foot by 10 foot for about $35 on Amazon. You can get it at Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart. Camping World, any RV store pretty much will have it. Yep. It's very easy to install. You measure your windows, you cut it to the size, and then you can use Velcro to stick it onto the windows. Well, here's a video of Susanna installing it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and install this. This is the insulation we're talking about. It's already been cut and measured and Velcro has been attached. Um, top and the bottom so we can stick it to the windowsill. Very easy to install depending on your location. This part is easier than installing on another window because there's a big space here. But you just slide it on up. And stick it in all the spots and then pull the shade down. Voila. So some people worry, oh, if I put this, this Reflectix in there that they're not gonna be able to use their windows. So we'll show you what we do. Either you can leave the Velcro at the bottom or we just peel it up. And because we have these window treatments, it's actually really easy just to roll the Reflectix up inside. Roll it up and then you have your natural light. And then you can just open up your window just like you normally do. And when you're ready, reach your hand up there, close the window, lock it, pull your insulation back down, voila. So if you have a window on your RV door, don't forget to cover that as well. You can get uh, an already pre-cut, pre-made one at most of your local RV stores or on Amazon for about $12. Yep, we happen to have these left over from Casper because our door does not have a window on it and they work perfectly for something else. So if you have skylights, while they're really nice to let in all the light, they also let in all the heat. And if you aren't able to get a foam insert, which we kind of didn't think about until it's too late, <laughs> we can't order one now, um, you can use these handy dandy oh, pre-measured <laughs> things to fit right over your skylight. You, you can either use um, the Velcro or you can use some sort of uh, 3M tape or whatever to pull them on there. Yep. They work great. And so like she said, we couldn't get one in time uh, because we are heading to Vegas in about three days and it's going to be 100 degrees there. So we couldn't get, we didn't have time to get one shipped. So this is working perfect. The next thing, if you have a motor home, you've got that big window in the front. So most come with some type of privacy screen, but you can also buy interior or exterior covers. Whatever you've got, make use sure you use them, it. <laughs> because that is a big opening for the heat to come right in. Exactly. The last way to kind of bring some shade into your life is with slide out toppers. Now this is not a cheap option. Uh, for our four slides, we paid a little over $2,000 with installation, but slide out toppers will protect from rain, snow, debris falling on top of your roof. 
uh, so it makes it easier to bring them in and out. You don't have to worry about sweeping them off every time. It's also and quieter oh, it is, when it's yeah. raining. If you have the slide out top where it hits that first before it hits your roof, yep. like on your slides, and it's very, it's nice. But it actually keeps it cooler too because it provides a barrier uh, and then some shade on top. So the heat actually is able to pass through and you notice a big difference. So for us, it was definitely worth the cost. Mm -hmm. All right, so our next section is just parking it right. So big motor homes, kind of like we said earlier with those big windows, just face it in the direction where the sun isn't gonna be during the hottest part of the day. Request a different site. If you're boondocking, go look at what time it is and where the sun's at and you can adjust accordingly. If possible, park with the side that you wanna keep coolest away from the afternoon sun. You know, if your refrigerator is on the driver's side, and that's the way the sun is going to be aimed spin it around and go the other way if you can if you can and again you can request sites at many rv parks but that parking thing kind of leads us to the next section keep it chill you gotta chill out this whole area is all about the refrigerator mm -hmm. so rv refrigerators can struggle to maintain temperature and here's some ways to help with that like we said earlier parking in the shade if you can only get shade on one side of your rig then park it with the fridge in the shade because that fridge is going to get warm in the summer. It's going to be struggling. The fan's going to be on constantly. Yeah, this noise. Another thing, don't overpack your fridge. We know it's great to get like all the food <laughs> that you want to get before your trip, but the more food you have in there, the harder it is for the fridge to keep cool and there's no airflow. So it's even worse. And so part of that packing with your fridge, is you don't want to put things against the sides and against the back. You want it more towards the center so the airflow can kind of go around. Mm -hmm. Another way to help keep your refrigerator cool is with ice packs. So we actually have four ice packs and we rotate them through the fridge on hot days, two at a time. We put one on top and one on the bottom on alternating sides and that helps with keeping a little bit of the airflow and leads to the next and final tip in keeping it chill. Refrigerator fans are small and relatively cheap, and they will help keep the air flowing um, and the temps down. We place one on the top and one on the bottom and opposite corner so that kind of keeps the air going. So these, again, you can get at Walmart, Amazon, Camping World, any of your local RV stores will have them. Okay, so now if you're going on natural, AKA boondocking, you don't have any power, but you're looking for a way to to kind of cool down a little bit. So number one, go back and listen to what we said about throwing shade on it and park it right. But then... I mean, it may seem like common sense, but open up your windows during the coolest part of the day to allow fresh air in. And then when it starts to get a little bit warm, close it down so that it doesn't get too warm. Yep. But your vents on the top of your RV, open those up. That's gonna allow the hot air to get out instead of stifling everything inside. Mm -hmm. Air conditioning. Air conditioning. That's our next section. And, and it's the most important section. We think, because we really like to stay cool. Yeah. So if you can't run your AC unit due to power issues, staying cool is gonna be a real struggle for you. One thing with AC units is they draw a lot of current. So every time you turn them on or the compressor kicks on, it's gonna draw a lot of power. And if you're running on a generator, it may kick trip that generator. Or if you're running on 30 amp, you could actually trip that also. So we are highly recommending a product called Soft Start RV. So Soft Start RV allows you to run two AC units on 30 amp, one AC unit on a small, like a 2000 watt generator, or two units on a large generator. We have a Champion 3400. Uh, you could run one AC unit just on a regular household plug-in, which is pretty cool. And we've tested all of this and it works amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only does it allow you to do those things, but it makes it quieter. Because you don't hear that thump, thump every time the compressor kicks on. You don't have that anymore. And why does it do that? Because it cuts the power demand by 70%. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's one of the most exciting things that we've installed on the RV, as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you are interested in a soft start RV, they will work on any type of RV AC unit. So you can go to softstartrv.com slash hint in the trail, and we could save you 30, 60, or even $150 off your purchase. 
so the next one, you know, maybe you have a functioning AC unit, but the airflow leaves a lot to be desired. Which is really common in most RVs. Mm -hmm. These our AC units are not built to be efficient. So what happens is you lose a lot of that airflow out of the sides instead of actually pushing it directly to the ducts or through the dumps. So we are recommending the RV Airflow product. RV Airflow can increase your airflow by up to 40%. That's awesome. That is awesome. So the RV Airflow is kind of like having a second AC without paying $1,000 for a new unit and installation. Install time is less than 30 minutes. And it pushes 100% of the air to your ducts, so it cools your RV faster, quieter, saves energy and balances airflow throughout your RV. Pretty cool, huh? Here are the results that, that we saw when we installed the RV Airflow in our unit. So we have nine ducts inside of Tandy, our fifth wheel. This is the airflow before the installation, after the installation, and then overall we had a 33% increase in airflow. That's a lot of cold air. It is. All right, so if you are interested in the RV Airflow, just go to www.rvairflow.com and you'll be able to verify whether or not your, your RV and your AC units are compatible with the modules. If you are gonna purchase one, use our discount code. We are one of the only people actually giving 15% off on this product. So our discount code is all caps, hit in the trail 15, and you just put that in at checkout. That's 15. Yep, we gave you 15 ways you can help keep your RV cooler in the summer. If there's something that we missed or some other ideas that you have, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs up button twice. Make sure you hit the subscription button and the notification bell so you know when our next video comes out. And remember, we're hitting the trail. Life's an adventure. Hop on. And that's how you beat the summer heat. Pew, 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 pew. Thank you for watching. We'd love to share our journey with you. So hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you know when a new video is uploaded. And don't forget to leave your comments down below and hit the like button.